So the one and only, the amazing and talented Jen Neal from Yahoo Sports joins us right now. Hi, Jen. Everybody. And she's reaching us from California where it's hot and warm. And anybody in Canada right now just went, oh. She said it's 70 <laughs> degrees, which that's not a thing. It's not a thing, that's, no. That's no. like boiling. The rest of the world knows it as not a real temperature. Yes. Yeah. You can't, can't I mean, you know, the it's rest not. of the world moved on, America. Mm. Also, that's all we're saying. Um, I'm just saying. Jan, we got to talk about the NWHL. Yes. And the fact that, what is it, a month and a half into the first season that they're paying they're they're slashing no, these salaries. This is uh, second. second second season. Is this second the second full season? season? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is the second season. So yeah, that was I mean a huge shock. It it just came completely out of the blue that they were suddenly going to slash these salaries, and and really it came out of the blue not just to the media and to the fans to the players. They had absolutely no idea this was coming, and um. You know, we've heard it's been, the league wouldn't confirm it. We've heard it's been around 50%. Some players are saying it's upwards of 65%. Whoa. Um, and these women make pennies already. I mean, like, the league minimum is $10,000. So you cut that in half even. That's five grand. You can't live in Boston on five grand. And um, You can't live in Boston just, on ten grand or twenty six grand, which is what Amanda Castle makes? Yeah, you yes. can't. I mean, she lives in New York. So you oh, can't. Geez. There's no way you can live in Brooklyn, like, or any part of New York with that kind of money. And like, even in Kessel's case or Hillary Knight or any of the national team players, they do make money outside of that. But compared to like the men's national team, it's peanuts. So it's not like they have a staff or, or the money that they can live off of. Wow. That's crazy. And so it was a month. Why did they wait for a month? Cause I, I we were talking about like optics of certain things earlier in the show. This, <laughs> I mean, it looks sneaky, doesn't it? You know, it really does. I don't know if sneaky is the best. You know, that's like probably a good word to use, but not the best word. It okay. looks, it just looks bad as if the, the league went into it with all these expectations. They signed all these contracts. They didn't, you know, move up the salary cap. They kept it the same, but still they, they re-signed everybody. They, they increased the league schedule by 10 games. Um, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, we, you know, you're going to be playing more. You're going to be doing all this, but we can't pay you for it. So and that is something that if a business is run correctly, they're going to know that before they go into a season or before they go into a free agency where they can see like we're not meeting, you know, ticket revenues. We have to cut the salary cap or something like that. But this, this came just completely out of the blue. So they, how many games did you say it increased? 10 games? I think it was ten games across the whole league. So if I'm a player, so let let's say I made fifteen grand last year, and I re-signed to make fifteen grand this year, uh, and, and I'm play playing 10 more. ten more games. I that's mm-hmm. I already received a pay cut. I'm receiving less yeah, per game than I did last year. Yeah, that's basically it. I mean, there's some players that did get an increase in salary um, going into the season because and of. And in speaking with some players that it was because of the more games that they did ask for more money and they got what they wanted. So, um, but then some players took pay cuts and it's just the expectations are more on the women. And I asked Danny Ryland, the commissioner on the conference call when they, they confirmed the salary cuts that, you know, was this a mistake that you guys increased the, the schedule because you said you're having ticket revenue problems. Well, and she and that's more game day expenses. You're like, no, the cost is fixed and all these things. But if you can't sell tickets, you're not going to make any money in those 10 extra games. Right. So so it, what I was going to ask you. Question. Yeah. To that point, like if, okay, so if you're doing 10 extra games, they don't own the arenas, right? So nope. they've got to rent the arenas. They've got to stock people to sell concessions. They got to do all those things. And Jen, I don't know the business makeup of the team. Is it possible that they're losing money more money. <laughs> More money because of the the increase in schedule game by game. I think that's a possibility. I mean, they Danny talked about um, how a lot of the teams are run mainly off volunteers, which is true. But still, there are, and as she said, fixed costs with like renting ice time, renting the arenas. Um, if a team is traveling, having them you know stay overnight at a hotel or um, 
which they're all in New England, but, you know, if they do travel, then they will put them up for the night. There are still costs involved, and if you have to do that more often throughout the season, then, of course, you're going to lose money on that if you're not pulling in money at the same time. Wow. So, so the league office has this conference call, and they, they give really no concrete explanation for this. How do... What recourse do the players have, um, and how have they reacted thus far? Um, well, it's kind of two parts. They they really said that we didn't meet our ticket projection, okay. so um, that was part of the reason, and and that's something that they should have been able to see before the season even started when they started selling like season tickets and pre sales and stuff. So that was just a mistake on their planning. Um, as for the players, they. Um, they were all shocked. I mean, clearly we all were shocked. Um, and a lot of them just really want to be there, but they, they have to kind of rearrange their life now and wonder if, you know, can I still play hockey and make $5,000 a season and still hold down a full-time job? Um, and, and they're angry and, and, and I don't blame them for being angry. The one big thing that they did though, is that instead of, using the NWL, the NWHL uh, Players Association, which is really not that big of a deal. Some players went out and listed this, this list of demands on Twitter that they wanted for the league, or they wanted the, the league to answer. And, um, and it, it just gives them a little bit, or it gives the league a little bit of room to kind of push back at them and say, like, is this just some players that are saying this? Cause you're not doing this as a union. And, I wrote about it on Puck Daddy that they have all these bylaws in place and, and rules for governing things like this, like salary cuts and emergency situations. And neither the league nor the players are following through with any of that. And it's wow. just causing now a media firestorm because it's a, you know, one side against the other. And, and who's going to want to invest in a league that's publicly fighting its players and, and they can't come to a deal. I mean, they played this weekend, but it, it this past weekend, but it it still was like just that that big elephant in the room that nobody really wanted to talk about. Yeah, have have they lost any sponsors? Because I remember, I think uh, what was it Dunkin' Donuts last year or something they got, and it was like a pretty big victory for the league, right? Yeah, you know, Dunkin's still a part of um, the the sponsorship group. Uh, they they actually donated an extra fifty thousand dollars that. Um, should oh, wow. go that is going straight to the player's salaries. How great. the distribution That's great. is worked out, uh, we we don't know. Um, but I've asked the league for just a list of sponsors, and they they haven't gotten back to me at all. So, and you go on the website, and you don't really see like you, know, you see a Dunkin' Donuts, and you see like a hospital. I think is the other one, but. Um, you know, they're not splashing on their webpage, you know, all these sponsors. So that, that has to make you wonder, like, it, are the people back off? Are there, there private investors that are no longer investing? I mean, we really don't know anything about how this league is funded very much, at least not very much. So it, that, that's just a huge question mark. And that's, and I think the players understand that, that they, they too don't know who is paying their paychecks on, um, a weekly basis, if the money's even going to be there, if they're going to be paid on time. I mean, because they don't know where the money's coming from. Well, that's a little bit scary. I mean, not knowing, not knowing if you're going to get paid on time. Uh, there's a couple, couple questions I have for you. The first one is, you know, how is it possible that the league puts out a statement like this and doesn't meet with the players in their dressing rooms or, you know, doesn't hold team meetings first or even at least a conference call. I mean, is, is it actually, you guys found it at the exact same time? Well, the, the way Danny explained it to the reporters was that they spoke to uh, the general manager the night it kind of got leaked out um, by the fourth period. I think that was Thursday. It all kind of blended together. Um, the, that night, the, uh, the league told the general managers and then they told some players from some teams and kind of then let them go back to their teams. I don't, there's some rumors of an email that went out. I don't know. I haven't seen anything. Um, and then the next day, 
uh, we wrote on it that night when the rumor first came out. Then uh, the next morning, they had the conference call. So um, the players knew, but they they found out just like barely before we did, basically. <laughs> wow. Um, geez. So they barely had time to digest. The other thing I have, a question I have, and something I've been thinking about f- for a bit, and, and tell me if this is crazy or not, for a league that is really just getting a start, um, and, and, and not not just getting a start in terms of its history, but it's getting a start on finally pl- paying people, um, does it make more sense for them to move to a model? And I don't know if um, the players in the league would agree to this, but a mixed salary um, sort of setup. So let's say everybody who plays in the league makes $3,000 minimum. And then based on what the league makes in sponsorships, there's a commission on that. And then based on your skill level, you can get more or less of that commission. So you can guarantee people a little bit more, a little bit less. Like, you know, again, a a superstar in the league, Amanda Kessel, for instance, she would make more of a uh, um, more of a percentage of that than, say, someone else who, you know, is just a rookie and brand new. Does that make would that work? Do you think I think that would be really complicated. Um, and really, I mean, because they're trying to be fair across the board as far as players that aren't on the national team, right. that they can still make, you know, I mean, still as like 15 grand, 20 <laughs> grand, if that, um, and some extra money while they're, you know, coaching on the side or they're working full time jobs. So that would be difficult, I think, also in the aspect that the players have no idea, again, where the money's coming from or if um, they're going to get paid from week to week. I think I wrote that. I thought that the GMs and the coaches' salaries should be tied to ticket sales because um, the uh, Danny talked to Pug Daddy over the summer and said to us that you know we're trying to make each team like their own entity um, and they're really in charge of driving their own revenue or driving their own ticket sales and things like that. And it's like, well, obviously that didn't work. So somebody should be responsible for that. Somebody should be taking the hit, and it shouldn't be the players if they're holding up their end of the bargain by coming to practice, doing whatever charity events they have to do. It's on the league and, you know, whoever runs the team to, to get that, that extra money in. And I I think that's where the big disconnect is, is that they, nobody's really kind of taking responsibility for why there's a lack in income. And it's, it's just a really weird situation. Wow. Wow. Is anyone discussing at all a uh, merger of the two women's leagues? Well, um, this is a big thing that um, if you ever follow me on Twitter that I like freak out about because I'm like, guys, come on, let's be serious. They, you have to think about it this way, that the CWHL, um, the Canadian Women's Hockey League, is on track to pay their players next season. So they have been around for, this is their 10th year. They've had 10 years to build their their financial pl- plan and structure to get to that point where in their 11th season, they can pay players and still function as a league. So to bring in, you know, if they were to fold one of the Boston franchises, but then bring in the three other teams from the NWHL, that's something they, they couldn't have planned for. I mean, mm-hmm. Brenda Andres has said, you know, we've planned to pay players for the past five years. We just had to get to that point. And in no point did they assume that a new league was going to start up Hmm. And all of a sudden, you know, people are going to be like, hey, you you guys should just merge together because that's a whole other, you know, kind of can of worms. Like maybe their salary structure is different. If they're, you know, these are all American teams, how are they going to pay them in Canadian versus American dollars? And they're not planning for that. So it would take them, I would think, another like three years to maybe reach that point. Wow. If the CWHL really wanted to do it. And that would take some significant fundraising on their part, too to get more money in there so that they could handle all these rinks in the U S and Canada and pay the players too. So, uh, it's March, 2016, I think March 13th. Uh, I'm in Ottawa. I'm at the Clarkson cup and everyone is freaking out and asking Brenda Andrus about, um, I think it was the night before the NWHL the thing. Sorry. Yeah. They put was up a the tease. Thing? Yeah, they put up a tease about expansion in Toronto and Montreal. That was in mm-hmm. March of this year. <laughs> Absolutely. What happened? And 
I know. And, and I asked Danny that um, over the summer when I talked to her that said, do you, do you regret doing that? Because do you have any plans to expand? And it's like, she was very coy on it and didn't really, didn't really go into it. And, it, and I saw that when they, they did the teaser, we were all on the ice for the Isabel cup. Like they were handing it out and they did the teaser while we're the media is on the ice talking to the players. So we had no idea what was happening until Kate Samini got a text from somebody else saying that they had teased it. And I saw that as like, okay, one, the league is doing well enough where they think that they have, you know, enough balls, if you will, to go ahead and invade Canada um, with this new league. And that too, it's an act of war kind of telling the CWHL we're coming for you. Well, what's that look like now? I think it looks pretty dumb. I mean, to be quite honest that you make all these promises or you show something like that. And what's happened? Nothing, nothing has happened on that. Front. Which, which leads, so, leads you to lose face in front of even like everybody, advertisers, players, everybody that deals with these teams. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's like your eyes are too big for your stomach kind of thing. <laughs> like we're going to go ahead. We had a good first season and now we're going to just go ahead and take over the world. It's like, no, you need to do baby steps. This is still a startup. It's, it's still trying to figure out like what works and what doesn't. And, and, and I thought that was just a ridiculous move unless they really absolutely had intention to expand. And as far as we knew, like they had registered a trademark or copyright up in Canada, but as far as that went, I mean, they didn't have anything else. Jen, you sound exasperated by this. <laughs> I am. You know what? I think I'm just like really annoyed because it was such a great stride for women. And now it looks like, um, it, it, to use just a terrible term, it's a cat fight. Like now it's one side versus the other. You know, it just, it, it puts women's sports back, I think, to have these, this infighting and showing that like, you know, women's sports don't draw the fans or they, they can't support themselves. And this just proves all those people that tell, um, all of us, like, there's no reason to watch women's hockey. Like, it doesn't prove them right, but it gives them cause. I mean, it gives them something they can complain about. And it's just incredibly frustrating from my point of view that this one couldn't have been handled in a, a more professional manner as far as communicating to the players and um, the players handling their grievances behind closed doors because they, again, like I said, this is this shows that this league has infighting and if I'm, you know, a millionaire, why am I going to want to invest my money in this league that may not be here a year from now? Well, and- so it's just, it's, it's a really sad and really somewhat annoying situation. Speaking of millionaires, um, can you uh, explain once again, Danny Ryland's background? Like who, who she what was? was you sound like you're in a hole. Oh, sorry. Hello. How's that? Yeah. Yeah, you're better. <laughs> I, I had I had my like face in my hand because I'm just I'm ex, I'm as exasperated as you are just <laughs> <laughs> talking about and listening to this. But but uh, so who was and is Danny Ryland like before this whole NWHL thing? Um, she I think you know she had played college hockey at Northeastern and um, I think she's 28. It could be wrong. 29. Um, and. It was just basically the what we have been told is that she went into the CWHL to say, hey, let's bring a franchise to New York. They weren't moving as fast as maybe she had liked, and she had... Uh-oh. And she hung up. <laughs> we'll have to call Jen back. Give us just a second here. Shoot. Um, Steve, do you want to just give me her... Uh, yes. Show me her contact. Damn. That was going to get really interesting. Well, not that it wasn't, but like I think the NWHL shot her. (laughs) (laughs) They came for no, but like like that's amazing. What is the killers came for her? What a story, right? Like they 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 don't have the they they're not moving the franchise fast enough, so she just starts her own league. Like that's interesting. Yeah, but that's all stuff we knew. What I was trying to get to, and 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 we'll get to it with uh, you know when we get her back on the phone, um, is like I think. Based uh, based on what I heard, and this might this information might be wrong, so we'll ask her. Obviously, I thought she came from money, hmm. and yes, she looks she looks foolish here, but she'll she'll be fine. She can afford to look foolish. She can afford to look. Thank you, Jesse. That's actually a really good way of putting that. I think Th- these players. I mean, they're going to have to decide like mid season. Like, can I do this anymore? Mm-hmm. 
What happened? We're not sure. I don't know. We we thought uh, the NWHL sent snipers to take care of you. <laughs> I was like, blame Donald Trump. And, I, I, well, and you were you were just about to tell like that story. I was like, what? Yeah. How did the end? That's how the NWHL started. Oh my god. Yeah. So here, before you continue, Jen, let me say what I just said while you were not uh, connected to us <laughs> because it, it wouldn't be fair otherwise. So what I had heard, and tell me if this information is wrong. Basically, Danny Ryland, Danny Ryland looks foolish right now, but the way Jesse put it, I thought it was good. She can afford to look foolish. Like, she's got the money. Well, what I'm told is that she is taking in maybe 30 grand in salary right now. That's from the league, though. Right? Yeah. So what... But she... But prior to I that... I mean, I don't... I don't know, like, what her family's like. I know her dad played in the NHL, I think. But okay. I, I don't know where she got money, but she got money from investors and like all the crazy people that sent all those weird emails during the summer. Oh, I missed that story. <gasps> oh, yeah. Yeah. Can you fill us in on that, please? Because we I don't think we really covered that. Oh, yeah. You Are you on air or off air? No, right, we're, <laughs> right now. Yeah. If you, get, if right you can now. do it on air. Yeah. Let's talk about it. Yeah. Well, whatever okay. you wrote about well, and whatever okay, yeah. you're comfortable with. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah. So where should we start? I don't even know where to start. I don't, okay, so you didn't people just start getting a bunch of psychotic emails? Yeah, so uh, a bunch of women talkie writers like myself, Kate Samini, and uh, you know others started getting these crazy emails telling us you know, from these random email addresses like Marty McFly eighty um, <laughs> six. <laughs> yeah, I know. It was like, really, come on, come on. Um, just telling us like all this quote unquote insider information about stuff that was happening, and then there was like leaks of internal emails and um, you know things from like Bauer telling them that they hadn't paid, and Whoa. and then there's threats of lawsuits, and this was all last season, and and we. We wrote about some of it on Puck Daddy, but we wouldn't write about all of it because, one, we couldn't verify it. And there was one person, and I'm going to leave this person's name out, but they, they kind of circled around this person who no longer works for the league. And um, and in talking to Danny during the summer, you know, she kind of alluded to that they took a lot of, they took investment from kind of like, white knight investors, like guys who wanted to, and it, it was guys, guys who wanted to come in, swoop in and, and sweep this women's league off their feet and make them into this, like, you know, this great successful league, but they wanted a whole lot of control. And, and there was like no, no non-disclosure agreement signed by the league. And so it just, it, it just ended up like kind of blowing up and, and we'll still get an occasional email. Like I won't write about them as much because I just think that at this point it's like it's not even worth it. But there is a lawsuit against the league right now by one of the investors um, for six hundred and fifty thousand dollars in damages for um, that's crippling. Not like living up to their end of, for the league, not living up to like their end of the bargain. Um, and it was uh, the, Michael Moran who was this investor, and he end up being the marketing officer and then they got rid of him or something. And, um, that's in litigation right now in, in Massachusetts, I think. But, um, I asked Danny on the conference call if, if the lawsuit had anything to do with them not getting sponsorships or them not, um, taking in the revenue they expected. And she said no flat out. So, um, hmm. okay. it's just, it's like a drama. Like I could write a probably write a pretty good movie off of this if <laughs> oh, I yeah. ever felt like it. Um, wow! It, it's just it, you. You. It makes me mad, and it, 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 I think exasperated is, is the right way to put it because I. It, it just feels like this is taking us twenty steps back, and 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 trying to do something that started so well and so had so much coverage at the very beginning. Now is just looking almost foolish because the the players are just they're getting screwed and and the league isn't in a place where they can you know tell them like it's going to be okay you'll, you'll get your money back at the end of the season um which they said if they found new revenue streams or something like they would find a way to recompensate the players but they don't know if that's going to come they don't they don't know if they're going to play from week to week uh, did you see the tweet yesterday? Uh, I'm trying to find it right now. 
Uh, did you see the tweet that uh, before one of their games during warm-ups, they played Bitch Better Have My Money? <laughs> yes. That was funny. I saw that right before, um, I think I did, it was like hockey prime time on Saturday, Sunday, Sunday. And um, they had just come out with that. And, and I saw it and I was like, oh my God. It's about to get, and yeah. It's like, well, couldn't that be a coincidence? It's like, yeah, but that's a really strong coincidence. I mean, that's pretty gnarly. And other pe- and another thing was that, um, and we don't know if this has anything to do with it, but Hillary Knight was a healthy scratch, um, didn't travel to the game in Buffalo and when Boston played Buffalo. And so we don't know if that had anything to do with it, if that was like some kind of civil protest. Um, but she, she hasn't played a lot this season because she's had, I think, some injury issues. But she wasn't in the game, wasn't with the team. I mean, yeah, and someone, I want to say Hannah Beavis um, confirmed it was a healthy scratch. Yeah, it was a healthy scratch, but she didn't even travel. Okay. That was the other thing. Interesting. Yeah. Um, On okay. her Snapchat, apparently, it proved that she didn't travel. Oh. Um, so, okay, we've talked... I want to get to the ducks, but before we do that, because we, we've <laughs> sure. been so negative about this whole thing. Yeah. Um, how can fans support these players because in the end the players are the ones getting screwed here so how do we support the league how do we support the players well um the first thing is if you're in new england or uh, buffalo area even toronto go to a game go pay money and go to a game don't slip in the front door and not pay money go pay money and go see a game (laughs) yeah like if if security's not there like you can slip in and see a game i mean Okay, oh, wow. well, how about everyone ignores what Jen just said <laughs> <laughs> and forgets that information? Wait, I'm sorry, I have no idea. Who What's the that? average attendance like? Yeah, I'm not sure. No. My uh, private jet's in the shop, so I don't get out to many games uh, <laughs> mm, from California, fair. but I just know it's down. From what I've been told, it was down. So um, I couldn't tell you what it is. I don't even know if they publish attendance figures, but... Um, I know that the Boston Pride moved from the Harvard, this Harvard rink to where the, the Bruins practice. Um, and it's a significantly smaller, which has helped them um, kind of pack it a little bit more. And they're a great team. But um, that's, again, like less butts in the seats, so less ticket revenue, but it's probably cheaper on them. So who knows, you know, how many fans they're drawing in a game. Um, it. So the other thing to say is it goes supported is you can buy like jerseys, jerseys online. The players get a percentage of still, will still get the percentage of uh, jersey and jersey sales with their names on it. It's not much, but it's something. something. And and it's just watch the game, support the women. Um, it, it just do whatever you can to try to turn a positive out of this. And, and really, if you're in the East Coast and, Apparently, like public transit is a thing out there. You can get to games <laughs> easily. Oh, yeah, it says the person with free public transit in LA. Isn't it free in downtown LA? It's, it's and no garbage. one takes it, but it doesn't exist. Yeah, it's, so. uh, it doesn't exist. I wouldn't even. Oh, I would never go on that. I went to like went on an Orange County bus once for an assignment at school, and it was. I will never do it again. Why is it scary? Life. It wasn't scary. Well, I got lost, and I didn't understand that buses only go, like, one direction, and you have to mm-hmm. go on one side of the street. And, oh my God, I sound like the worst Orange You County sound like, oh, person. my goodness, <laughs> the Californians. <laughs> <laughs> Jen, you're on the yeah. bus? What are you doing here? <laughs> you on the bus. What are you doing here? <laughs> what are you doing here? Jim? Oh, I just did that. <laughs> did you take the 405 up here? Yeah. <laughs> I just grabbed these tangerines. <laughs> um, Jen, let's talk about Freddie Anderson. Yeah. Now, I know you texted Steve as soon as the trade happened. You and I were tweeting back and forth when it happened, and you were upset because you thought that of Gibson and Anderson, Anderson was the guy that the Ducks should have kept. We're starting yeah. to see the Freddie Anderson that you talked to us about. Um, uh-huh. What what is your what are your thoughts on him? Uh, obviously, you've seen him this year in, in bits and pieces, uh, but what are your thoughts on him in, in general and what he's capable of? Um, I think he's showing you exactly who he is, which is you know he can give up a really like bonehead goal a game, but at the same time he's really even keel, and especially for being in Toronto, I think 
that's a huge asset because when he was struggling, like he got media questions, like he had never received in Anaheim ever before. And, and he just stayed pretty even keel, kind of worked through it all. And you're seeing who he is now in that, even with a defense that can be suspect at times. I don't know what you're talking about. That was very kind, Jen. (laughs) He's, um, he just shows that he's just a really steady goaltender that, I think it's just a huge benefit for the Leafs to have, and he's worth the money that they paid for him. Steady well, Freddy. You are the first person to say he's worth the money that the Leafs paid for. BS, him. I think I said that. I said that. Listen, you, you, well, you, you don't pay. I th- Jesse you don't, gave I, me the look that think I felt you on were, the inside. You were I, supportive of this trade. No, no, okay. What I said was you don't. if you want Carey Price, you pay Carey Price money. Frederick Anderson's yep. getting $5 million bucks. So he's playing like Frederick Anderson. He's playing like a $5 million goaltender, which is, I think, what Jen just described. Let's in a boneheaded goal on occasion. Not utterly fantastic, but steady. Right? And that's what you need, right? With a young team, you need steady. I think it, I think that's a big part of it, is that you just need that person back there that's not going to flip out when they let in a bad goal or anything. That He's just... Steady. So I think Steve is rewriting it. history. <laughs> <laughs> Steve might be. Steve might have shot an arrow and then point, painted a bullseye around it. Yeah. I <laughs> said, I said Shea Weber would be a great fit. In <laughs> 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 first, when like the first couple games happened, I was like. Toronto, you broke Freddie. What are you doing? <laughs> and then, and then he started doing better, and I was like, okay, this is better because I was like, no, oh, they broke his spirit already. It's only like three games. To in. be fair, that's Team Europe's fault, technically, isn't it? Mm, I mean, yes, it is. Well, they bro- broke him in general. Yeah, so we blame them. Yeah, he. I don't know. It, was he like known as an aggressive goalie in Anaheim? Because the first five games or so, where he got completely lit up, he was. He, I don't think he ever played in the blue paint. <laughs> he was uh, just yeah, all no, in the white paint. Yeah, no, not at all. I mean, he's a really good puck handling goaltender, but he he, he, no, he never is like that. And maybe that's the goaltending coach if that's a change from um, Dwayne Rolfe who he had out here to whoever your goaltending coach is in Toronto. Uh, but, it's not um, a lair anymore. Who is it? I was... Whoa, I forget his stupid name. I forget his name. I think Saint Croix. Yeah, it's French Canadian. I or, think. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Um, okay. In the meantime, but, yeah, so, sorry, go so ahead. That could be it. Oh, no, that that could have been it, is that he was trying to be too aggressive because of goaltending coach or trying to protect the team too much, but he's fallen back to basically what we saw in Anaheim for the last couple of years. Now, I thought he was pretty good. I know he got he got caught a couple times, but I thought that was the defense's fault. Um Oh, it's Steve Briere. Steve Briere. Sorry. Okay. Uh, well, we were. Hey, it's French Canadian. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, we. The thing is, Jen. You know, he he seems to. Um, he seems. To, it seemed like Freddie was used to defensemen that knew where their spots were, that knew what they were supposed to be doing. And it seems like, you know, for the first five, six games, the Leafs defense were really trying to figure it out. You look at the leads they blew um, and, and the forwards too. But I mean, it was defense and goaltending that was really suspect. And I think defense mostly. Well, 15 games later, though, the Leafs defense is still, still pretty bad. Still actually. pretty bad. Yep, yep, Yet the goaltending stabilized and the goal scoring's there. Yeah. Um, with, with a guy like Freddie Anderson, do you feel like, do you feel like, the Ducks really made a mistake in keeping John Gibson, or are you even happy with him? Well, personally, I would say yes, but that's just my personal feeling is I think that Freddie was the best option for this team. Um, Gibson has been okay. Um, just okay? A, ah. yeah, I, just okay. <laughs> I mean, not spectacular. I mean, Bernier was, has finally won a couple games, which he hadn't done in a while. Yeah. Um, no, but he's great. <laughs> the goaltending goal goal is just not what it used to be here. So um, I, I think it'll be the playoffs. That's when we'll see if Gibson is made of anything. Mm. I don't know. Like, Jen Neal's really calling Ducks playoffs. Wow. My goodness. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's wide open in the Pacific. It is. It is. And they do have, I mean, there's a few contracts on that team that we've talked about. They're a little suspect. I think the BX deal especially kind of stands out as one that's... Yeah. Oh, Kessler, tough. dude. And the Kessler deal, yeah. That kicked in this year, right? You bet. Yeah. Um, I j- think the Kessler deal is going to be good for the next two years, and then it's going to just be terrible. 
because he's te- he's like one of the best players on the team right now, which is oh. saying, saying well, a that's lot. good. So he better um, be. He, yeah, so uh, it's not like they could get rid of him or anything, but he's been <laughs> really good. Um, but he's even said like, yeah, we've got two, two, three years to win a cup, and that's it. And it's like, well, dude, you're here for like six more years, so <laughs> I don't know what we're supposed to do. Yeah, trade him that. to Phoenix. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, but not Phoenix. Ah, damn, dollar in the Phoenix Yard. Oh, Phoenix Yard. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I was funny. I was on. Uh, I was on the Arizona Coyotes Den Talk. Uh, yeah, Coy- podcast Den Talk, and they Liz on that podcast even said Phoenix. Oh. She was the one who slipped up, and I was like, oh. Oh, so it isn't just us, it's and that's an American country. dollar. Yeah. Oh, that's 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 wow. That's a lot more than ours. Um, it's a dollar twenty-five or something. <laughs> Jen, we we want to talk about too, because the, the thing is, is that yes, the contracts right now with with the Ducks are a little bit complicated. Cam Fowler is a name that keeps coming up, and Steve wrote, had me write down on my notes. Cam Fowler BS. So what <laughs> We're Cam, on the online p- portion. What Cam Fowler of, bullshit. What kind of Cam Fowler bullshit do we need to deal with? You, I'm going to leave that to the two of you, because I have no <laughs> idea where we're going with this. Like, like, is Cam Fowler... He's a duck, right? Like, are they even working on trading him still? No, it sounds like they're not. Um, because they've got Hampus now to... Um, Hampus went home to, like, a a relatively good deal where they can keep everybody where they're at right now. Um, from what we've been told uh, that Bob Murray doesn't want to shake up the room too much. And Cam Fowler's had a pretty steady season so far. And they think that getting rid of, of Cam would just cause a massive, you know, kind of shift in the locker room. So mm-hmm. um, I think it's going to come down now to the expansion draft. We'll probably lose him or Sammy. I don't know. Sammy Fadden. And- I think hmm. Cam has been great this season. He's been really well considering like everything he's, he's gone into it saying like, I didn't even know if I was going to be here all summer or, you know, in the past, in the first two weeks of the season. And then once Hampus gets back, then he, he feels a little bit safer, but still it's just, it, I feel bad for the guy. Cause I really like Cam. I think he's a great defenseman um, who just plays with bad partners a lot like Bieksa. Um <laughs> But I mean, he, who knows what's going to happen? I mean, we could lose into the expansion draft. Mm-hmm. Or to the Toronto Maple Leafs when we retrade you, Jonathan Bernier. Mm. Don't ask us how we're going to do that. We'll figure it out. <laughs> oh, I'm sure you'll figure it out. Um, how's how's Randy, Jen? Oh, uh, he is fine. Just okay? <laughs> yes. uh, is he just okay? Yeah. <laughs> just like Gibson. Like, but this team, I don't understand, and it's so cliche to say, but this team has no identity. Like, you don't, know what kind of team you're you're either going to get a team that scores like four goals a night or they're going to get shut out or score one goal so it's like i don't think they really know what they are and that that comes from the coach i guess but he's leaning a lot on kessler cogliano and silverberg um and what a surprise kind of, hmm. yeah but he's getting kevin Bieksa heavy minutes and it's just like that's not what we need. Come on. But it's like Jay McClement all over again. It's it's strange that you say that, Jen, because when I think the Ducks, just the way they're made up, I think big and big and strong. And when I think Randy Carlisle, I go, well, that could actually be a decent fit because that's the kind of team he likes. But you're like, they're not that. They're not at least that. I mean, they're they're big, but they're they're not like you know they're not the Ducks of when they won the Stanley Cup, obviously. But yeah, he's still. Uh, the difference, I think, is that the biggest thing between him and Bruce Boudreau is that Bruce ran four lines all the time, like always ran it, didn't have an enforcer, didn't have a fighter. But with Randy back, I mean, and you guys know this, that he has three lines and then he has one line that plays six to nine minutes a yeah, night. And then he plays Peter and Holland for four and a half minutes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and like, that's why they signed like Jared Bowl in the off season. He, he doesn't really do anything except go and probably fight somebody. And, and, and that's about it. So this is a difference for the team, which is making everybody else play heavier minutes than if they were playing under Bruce than they had in the past. So it, it remains to be seen if they're exhausted too, because I think that was a big part of them coming in so terribly to this season is that they were exhausted coming out of camp. I mean, except for the guy, I mean, even the guys that played in the world cup, but like the team was just tired and that's a hallmark of a Randy Carlisle coach team was where he bag skates them to death during uh, camp, and then they come into the season and they're exhausted and they have to dig themselves out of a hole. 
Well, and, and I think that's hard enough to do with the Leafs with all the media pressure and they play nine preseason games and it's ridiculous. But at least there are a lot of teams within like a reasonable uh, uh, distance of the Leafs. The Ducks have got to have one of the yeah. ha- hardest uh, schedules travel-wise in the league, right? Everyone in that division. Yeah, the, the Pacific, I mean, it, they've played so much back east already, which is good, I think, in a way. They started the, the season on like a, I don't even remember, a seven-game road trip, six-game road trip um, yeah. out east. And and that's good to get that out of the way early because they'll be playing a lot more games at home um, towards the end. But still, that's a wreck on them. I mean, and they really, with the condensed schedule, like everybody's seeing it right now, is that, they don't have many days off to practice, or if they do have a day off, they are practicing. It's, I think that's why we're seeing, too, just a rash of injuries across the league is because of this condensed schedule. And, like, Ryan Getzloff has missed a couple games because of lingering injuries. You know, Kessler, talking to him, coming back from the World Cup, he was sore and beat up from, you know, the games versus Canada, basically, and hasn't had time to recover. So... It remains to be seen how healthy everybody can stay across the rest of this season. Was was firing Bruce Boudreau a um, one of the quieter big mistakes of the off season? Um, it's hard to say. I think I think it was done as a reaction to the players that Bob Murray. I think also I think this is Bob Murray kind of throwing everything at the wall and seeing what sticks because. Why else would you bring back Randy Carlisle? I mean, really. Mm-hmm. It, um, certainly probably wouldn't but, have been his first choice when, when he fired Bruce. Well, it was. I think it was. Yep. And oh. Because he didn't want to fire Randy in the first place when, you know, however many years ago it was. But Boudreaux happened to be open, you know, happened to have just been fired from Washington. So, um, and he said that openly. Like, I didn't want to fire Randy. We're friends. And and that's when the rumors started floating around. I was like, no, this isn't good. Oh my gosh, this is actually happening. Like, he's <laughs> wow. That. And and this is him just trying to figure out something. Like, you know, shake out the cobwebs from the players that are have been under Bruce for all these game seven losses. Um, I think this is more just bringing a coach that's not Bruce. I mean, that's completely different than Bruce. And and. It, it could be, you know, kind of um, some in the eye of Getzloff and Perry, too, just saying, like, hey, Kessler was behind this idea. You know, we didn't really talk to you guys, so we're going to bring in Randy anyways. Because they, they quit on him when he got fired in the first place. Holy so smokes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, so, so I guess just once and for all, the Leafs and Ducks aren't making a big trade, are they? The Ducks aren't what getting JVR. You're like you're in a hole again. What's that? What did Steve say? I, you sound like you're in a hole. Oh, again. I'm sorry. Hello. How's that? Yeah. I shouldn't be. I was looking at the mic that time. Um, yeah. uh, They're not great mics. Yeah. Yeah. The Leafs and, and Ducks aren't making like a blockbuster trade anytime soon, are they? Because that seems to be uh, everyone's default. I mean, the Ducks don't have any money. So unless they <laughs> unload like significant cap space. Unless you guys want Jonathan Bernier back. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. It's okay. No. Well, they only have, the Leafs only have one goalie, essentially. Well, it, wouldn't it be funny if they took Bernier back as his contract's expiring to get someone, too, right? Like, they could do that. Never know. I mean, uh, and they well, do need... I don't even know who the Leafs' backup goalie is. It's Jonas Enroth. I was thinking about that. Jonas Enroth. Oh, really? and I think he started two games. Yeah. Wow. And the rumor is he's, like, already... Like they're already like, nah. I think we're gonna get someone else. Kari Ramo is well, they, practicing the Kings, with the Leafs. Basically, the Kings. I think Unrath was with the Kings last year, and they went through the same thing. Like where they were like, yeah, no, we're not impressed, and he wasn't happy. Yeah, he played sixteen okay. games. I think. Wow, wow. Well, interesting. Um, Jen, thank you so much for your time. You've given us so much of it. Your like entire morning. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we really, really appreciate it, and uh, I mean, we're, we got to catch up with you a little bit later, especially as this NWHO HL story unfolds, and of course about the Ducks because they are an interesting team, like you said. And when Fowler gets traded to the Leafs, yeah, that too. Oh, shut up! I hate you, <laughs> <laughs> Jen. Thanks so much. Thanks, guys. It was my pleasure. I'm always happy to be on with you. No, oh, bye. bye, bye, bye.